Hello, my friends. Welcome once again to Faith Walk 101. I just heard a uh, news report today, and I kind of wanted to follow up on it. Uh, they said that uh, Generation Z is returning to flip phones. Uh, so I want to you to listen to uh, some of the reasons uh, why uh, they are returning to flip phones and it does have a lot to do with the lesson that we're going to talk about because we're talking about returning restoring and rebuilding and uh, i think what a lot of people are starting to realize is that uh, this life is on such a fast pace that they want to step back and kind of uh, re-examine the way they're living. So uh, one of the reasons uh, why uh, this generation is saying they're going back to flip phones is they're saying that their iPhones are taking up too much brain space. <laughs> Can you believe that? Uh, so they're saying it's taking up too much brain space and they need to think more clearly. Um, as time go by, we found uh, that we did not need it. So they're recognizing that as time goes by, they really don't need to be attached uh, to technology 24 seven. Uh, they said that the phone was uh, dictating their life, but you would think that uh, you would just be able to set it down. Uh, but they're saying that uh, social media and all these other things are taking up too much uh, time in their life. And so now there's this push to uh, buy a phone that, uh, that is not connected to everything. You would think the simple thing to do would be to just put it down. And some of them have said they're going to get a flip phone, but they're still going to hang on to their iPhones uh, just to have that uh, connection to the world. So what I want to talk about tonight is three things. Return rebuild and we need to resist and um, so there must be a reawakening of our soul to recognize the condition of our body the things that's going on in our lives and um, sometimes we can just get on this uh, treadmill of life and we're just going 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 and it's not until we step off and we kind of look at uh, how our life is going and then that's when we recognize that our condition is such uh, that we re really need to slow down. And sometimes it might take a medical emergency for that to happen. So what are we going to return to and why? So uh, we're talking about returning and we have a generation that wants to return back to an old phone. They probably don't want to go this far back, right? And some of you all might remember these phones and uh, then there's probably a generation that's probably never seen these. But why return and what are we going to turn, return to? Well, why are we going to return to strengthen the body? You heard this generation said that they need more brain space. This, uh, these phones are taking up the space in their brain. They're not able to think. Well, we need to strengthen our body by returning back to some of the things that the church did when it first got started. So what uh, are we going to turn, return to? Well, we need to return to prayer. And there was a time that um, prayer meetings were pretty common, but as uh, time has gone by and as we have filled up our schedules with so many different things, uh, we are barely meeting once a week at the church to come together as a body. But there was a time when uh, we met more often and so we need to return to prayer. Prayer is powerful. In 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, Paul says, I want you to pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. And so we ought to pray without uh, ceasing. We're to have this prayerful life. And two, we need to be mindful uh, that we are holy. So we need to return to being holy. And what is holiness is it's just being separated from the world, your actions being sober-minded. And so this is one of the reasons why I think this generation is wanting to go back uh, to a much simpler phone because 
and the phones that we have today, the technology that we have today is connected to the world 24-7. There was a time where we relied on uh, newspapers for our information, but now technology, we can reach the world and we can see things as they happen, as they unfold. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where it happens at. And so uh, being holy is that we need to be separated from this world, the actions of this world. We need to be more sober-minded. Sober we need to free up some space inside our minds. So the Bible says we need to have our minds transformed by the renewing of the, of the Word of God. This is from Romans uh, 12, 2. Three, there should be an urgency for the gospel. Uh, there is a, a lost and dying world out there that needs to hear the Word of God. And so uh, there is an urgency for this. And all we have to do is watch the news or just interact in our world and, we, and the things that's going on. And as the people in our world struggle to find out why some of these things are happening, it's because they don't have Jesus Christ in their life. And so for us as believers, there is an urgency to reach this world. So we want to return uh, and we're going to return into prayer and holiness, and now we need to rebuild. And so, rebuild, we need a conviction for the truth. The truth. You know, uh, it's not uh, the truth will set us free. It's the power of the word. It's our standard that Christians use uh, to live by. In 1 Timothy 4.16, uh, Paul writes to Timothy, he said, I want you to watch your life and doctrine closely closely and what is doctrine it's the things that we believe he says you got to watch it you've got to guard it because the world wants to change it and so uh, we're going to rebuild by staying convicted to it we're not going to allow this world to change the doctrine of the truth uh, and so uh we're going to rebuild, and, and another way that we're going to rebuild is we need to find courage, uh, and courage to be bold, to uh, advance the gospel, to speak the truth, to stand firm on the word. So 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. And all that comes from the word of God. So we're going to return. We're going to rebuild, and lastly, we have to resist because we have an enemy that is constantly pushing at us, wanting us to take on things uh, that's ungodly. We are, we are holy. We're going to separate ourselves from the world. We're going to study the Word. We're going to rightly divide. And we're going to resist the world's standards by constantly praising God. And... Uh, so we don't have to buy a t a be a part of every new thing that comes out. We need to examine it first. And technology is not bad because we can use it to reach the world. But we don't want technology to control us. And so a lot of times I think we ought to be thinking, what happens if we're unable to use these things? We can still advance the gospel. Remember the early church. They, had, they did not have internet. Uh, airplanes, cars, or cell phones. But you know, the gospel went out to the world. It reached people. They did it. And they did it because the Spirit of God, living in believers, moved them out. And so there's really no excuse today. So we're going to resist the world's standard. So we can't let this world uh, take control of our time. Uh, we no longer have time for God. And that should not be, my friend. We should be able to meet uh, constantly. Uh, look what the early church did. They met daily. Uh, that would be out of the question today. But the lesson is about returning, rebuilding, restoring, and resisting the, the, the world standards, what the world is trying to, to set as a standard for the church. We can do this, my friend. Would you join us on Faith Walk 101 as we... Uh, approach uh, simple matters, uh, complex matters in this world, and uh, we encourage one another through the scriptures. Thank you.